Hey, Catherine, thank you for being here with me today. Cheryl, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> this is such a pleasure and I'm excited to have this conversation. Yeah, you've been my photographer for years now. You've watched my children grow. You've been yes. to <laughs> bar mitzvahs and special events and then just doing my um, social media, which I just love working with you because you make things so easy and um, you feel, I feel like that person out and know who they are. And so like our last session was so creative and fun and there was such a flow to it. It was, I think one of my favorite ones. Oh, I agree. I love that session. And it is something I really love about what I do with photography is getting to have those relationships and getting to know the people that I get to work with and see their lives unfold and also get to reveal, you know, something really true and authentic for them to see it back for themselves and, and for them to also be able to share it and, and be able to help define themselves out in the world, you know, in a, in a way that feels that really rings true to them. And yeah, that last session we had, um, it really felt like you're, we were getting to show off the best of, of you, your work and your heart. So. And of you and what you do. And, um, you know, I also do photography, so I understand, you know, what goes behind it. Cause sometimes the person it, it's a little, it could be a vulnerable space. So, oh, absolutely. You yeah. know, people can feel, a lot of things being in front of the camera. And um, as I'm sure we'll discuss, I'm also an actor. So I know how it feels to be in front of the camera and um, to be able to put someone at ease and to be able to um, encourage out the, the confidence that someone has naturally, even in such an unnatural and sometimes intimidating circumstance and being in front of the camera. Um, it's just, it's something that I really um, have worked on developing as a photographer and um it gives me great joy when someone can look back at, a, at an image that we created together and say wow that really looks and feels like me and that's exactly how i want the world to see me so it's something i just truly treasure about what i do as a photographer i can tell so can you tell our audience more about yourself and how you got to be both an, an actress and a photographer. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'll back it up a little bit. My name is, my full name is Catherine Kresge Kang. And so um, my acting life started, you know, professionally 19 years ago. And so all of my acting is under Catherine Kresge. Um, and I've been in dozens of commercials, television shows and films, studio films, independent films. I have a theater background. Um, and then, so fast forward, let's say about, let's see, 2012, I met my fiance, then now my husband. Um, so a decade ago, he actually gave me a camera for Christmas after we got engaged. And, um, and that was sort of the beginning of that journey. So then I took on his last name. So Catherine Kresge Kang. So I use Catherine Kang photography as that part of my <laughs> professional life. Um, because his gift really sparked that. Um, and it really, it's so funny when I think about that gift because I kind of don't know why he got it for me. I, I didn't really talk about photography. I didn't, I don't remember expressing an interest in it, but he got me this camera and it was really cool and really intimidating. <laughs> so sure. I let it, yeah, so I let it sit in the box for a good six months. Oh and my then gosh, can I tell you something? Because the last photographer that I interviewed said the same thing. Is that right? <laughs> he left hers in the box for like several months. Isn't yes. that funny? Okay. That, okay. Well, I'm not alone. That's great yeah. to hear because yeah, I mean, gear, it's so funny because I just, I just purchased a new um, external flash anyway for my camera and I'm like nerding out about gear now, but at the, at the beginning of it, it's so intimidating. So yeah, so I let us in the box and then we got married that next June. We went on our honeymoon and I said, okay, we're going, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to just shoot on auto. And I put zero pressure on myself and I, and it sparked that interest and I started seeing the world differently and it, it 
then it just became a little bit of a hobby. And then what happened was, is the next, so my, my parents, I'm, I grew up Catholic. My parents still practice. And every Lent, my dad emails me, Hey, Catherine, Ash Wednesday is coming the beginning of Lent. Just a reminder to think about it. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I thought, okay, I'm not going to give up chocolate or whatever people sometimes give up. Um, but I, I thought this was a really great opportunity to commit to something positive. And so I committed for 40 days to take my dog on a walk with my camera and shoot on manual and teach myself. And through that process of just a daily practice and not having any, you know, desired end result, it was just an exploration. I was able to really um, just explore literally the same neighborhood over and over and over again, new flowers, new paths, new just and everything and just tinker around. And that I think is why I love photography so much as well. I, I don't feel that pressure to um, I mean, of course, I always want to create gorgeous images for my clients and everything, but but it really comes from a place of exploration and having an eye on beautiful things. And it feels like a very creative practice versus, oh, I better get the shot, you know, <laughs> type of pressure. Um, and I think because it comes from that well of, you know, just creative love, um, it's why it's driven me for years and years to just keep keep at it and and keep adding more types of photography to my my repertoire, I guess. That's really beautiful. I feel like as creatives, we put so much pressure on ourselves to make things perfect. And I love what you did where you're like, okay, no pressure. I'm exactly. just gonna do this and enjoy it. And, and I feel like your husband, ha it's like his intuition kicked in, you know, like it's like, okay. Oh, think maybe she might benefit from this or I agree I mean it was an inspired gift yeah, yeah it really was that's beautiful and then that same energy it totally goes back to my other work as an actor because you know there's a lot of um sometimes pressure to you know get things word perfect and hit the jokes or make that you know cry on cue or whatever those things are and so to have both practices f sort of feeding off of each other and and also teaching myself, uh, you know, in both practices to just go back to that beginner's mindset, to go back to what's happening in this moment? What am I seeing in front of me? How can I capture it in a way that is just because that's the way I see it, my heart, that's the way my heart sees it. Um, and so, yeah, it's just really cool to see how the two really work together and, and benefit each other. That's beautiful. Um, was there anyone who inspired you growing up? Well, you know, the first person that comes to my mind is is always my mom. She um, was, she came from very, very, um, <laughs> well, just impoverished circumstances in Korea. And she came to the States with my dad. My dad was in the army and, um, I mean, she is such a, a, a self-starter. She teaches herself everything. She taught herself how to, she went to sewing school. She taught herself how to cook American food. Mm -hmm. um, she taught herself how to speak English. She got her GED. And then when I was in grade school, she um, put her, she went and got a bachelor's degree. So it's just, she blows my mind with how much of a self-starter she is. Um, and just has the most generous, loving heart of anyone I know. Um, and then, and of course, then beyond my mom, it's funny when I think about who inspired me, I was never in my mind a creative person, which is, you know, hilarious at this point. Isn't that amazing? Um, wow. It is. <laughs> I thought I was going to be, I really wanted to be an astronaut, which I think a lot of children of the 80s really <laughs> wanted to go to space. Um, so I looked up to Sally Ride, Amelia Earhart, you know, I thought I was going to be, you know, a pilot and then an astronaut. So, <laughs> wow. yeah, um, and it, it wasn't until later in life did I really look to creative, creative women, you know, for inspiration. Um, I love, I was just watching the trailer for Tar, the new Kate Blanchett movie, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, she's someone that I look to who, you know, is just wildly creative in everything yes. she does. Yes. So, and so strong. Yes, yes. 
Um, did you have any limiting beliefs or doubts becoming an actress or photographer? Oh, limiting beliefs. Um, I think we all have them. Um, but when it came to acting, I, again, I never saw myself as an actor and I got all these little nudges from coaches and teachers in starting in high school and then in college, my first year of college, um, people who saw me, like I, I did speech and debate in high school and my coach kind of got me into the acting events. And that's when I first fell in love with acting. I found, you know, I found a piece that I really resonated with and I actually was able to deeply emotionally connect with it. And I was able to see how I affected other people when I performed that piece. Um, but I still did not consider acting as, as a professional ambition. You know, I had no idea. So then I took a, an acting class in college as my, just my gen ed credit, you know, for my BA and my teacher said, you know, you should think about auditioning for the theater company. Um, and when I did, again, I, there was no, um, oh gosh, I better, I really need to get this or anything like that. So the limiting beliefs for me, once I actually kind of stumbled upon this career, stumbled into this um, life, it came later. You know, once I got the education and once I was in the profession, that's when I was a little bit more um, struck with, oh, am I good enough? Am I, do I look right? Um, if people are listening to the podcast, instead of watching this, um, I'm biracial, I'm half Korean and I'm half Caucasian. And so, you know, having the, the pool of actors around me, not really looking like me for the most part, um, not no, I think casting people, not knowing where to place me, um, that was a really, you know, it's been an issue for my entire career and it's been a challenge to then speak to myself kindly and 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 say no this is you know who i am this is this is my voice and to carve out my space in this industry um so yeah and then with photography i would say similarly i again it all began with no pressure and so the limiting beliefs then came in later once i had started my exploration and started to put myself out there more professionally you know i think women entrepreneurs women business owners um once they start putting themselves out there and start charging for their services might start feeling like oh maybe i need further education mm -hmm. maybe they start comparing their work to other people yes. and that's the tricky part right is to stay in a space where you honor your worth honor what it is you bring um and not feel the need to constantly prove yourself and um it's a i mean it's a conversation i have with myself daily <laughs> so oh, i do too i do too and you're so right i could totally relate to that and constantly telling yourself okay just take it a day at a time and you're on the right path and just keep going because yeah it is where well i need this other class too or maybe if i do this as well instead of just jumping into it and just doing it and, you know, seeing where everything goes and figuring it out along the way. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you don't have to have everything figured out beforehand because you never will. I mean, you never truly right. will. <laughs> no, no one does. Yeah. And, and it's just the way we speak to ourselves to have that compassion and, but also um, remind yourself of the worth and, and, you know, all of the gifts that you are bringing to the table, you know, and that people do, um, are going to get something out of, you know, a, an experience with you being creative, whether it be, you know, for me, if they like their photos, that's great. Or even just being in a creative, um, process with me there, they might have, you know, a benefit of just interacting with me. So, um, yeah, I think it's just that constant, um, conversation with yourself to, take the pressure off because that is where real creativity happens when we're not so focused on that end result. Um, Absolutely. While still have holding yourself to, you know, standards of, you know, excellence and professionalism, but there, it's sort of a fine line. We have to <laughs> walk, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I do feel like when 
Because there are times where I put so much pressure on myself to like sell my work and to promote it and all that. And then I would lose that creative spark. Like it would kind of like fizzle down and then I would have to kind of um, relax (laughs) and then let it go for a bit. Mm -hmm. And it would allow me to create again and just be more free. And then I would get back into promoting and all that <laughs> stuff. Like it's just this. It is. It's a cycle. And, but you have to be able to, yeah, return to yourself and return to the source, right? I'm listening to this audiobook um, called Essentialism, and he's talking about, you know, protect the asset. <laughs> yeah. And your asset is your heart, your creativity, your spirit, and to continually remind yourself that that is where it all needs to come from ultimately, you know, when we all, we all have to worry about, you know, that external stuff as well. But if you don't return back, you know, it will dry up, you it know? Will. Yeah. Well, what is the, the name of the author? Oh gosh. Now you're catching me off guard, but the book is called Essentialism and mm-hmm. it's a really, it's a really big, um, yeah, I guess self-help type of book right now. Okay, I'm um, definitely that. check it out. Um, the author is British, so if you want to listen to the audiobook, he's really great oh. at <laughs> doing the audio. Yeah, um, nice. I highly recommend it. I'm in the middle of it right now, and it's again, it it really does remind you go back to what's essential, mm-hmm. you know, um, because you know, even with my photography, I try to do a lot of different kinds of photography. Part of that is it keeps me creative. It makes me stretch myself. I, you know, I'm shooting a big event on Saturday. I just did you know, I do family photos, I do small business branding. Um, But then I go back to what's the essential thing I want to focus on for each thing. And it goes back to what is sort of my mission? Why do I do this? It's not, you know, a great money making venture. It's because I genuinely love capturing precious moments. I love reflecting back to people, the like genuine beauty and awesomeness that I see. So that is why I do what I do. And so that's, I think, what he's talking about. What I always go back to is what is essential? What is the core reason I do all this, you know? Um, and then similarly with acting, you know, why do I, and why am I doing this 20 years later, you know, when I know so many people who have left the industry for completely valid reasons, but why am I still doing it, you know? And it, um, for me, goes back to really searching for those for, for that sense of belonging, of self-exploration, of um, finding my voice and finding the courage to share that voice. So, you know, if you go back to those basic, you know, essential core values, it'll really um, propel you forward, even through, you know, times that feel challenging or, yeah. you know, when you're maybe not reaping the rewards you think you should be reaping and and all that. So it's important. It's important to reconnect with those, those things. I agree. hundred percent. Uh, has being in the creative field healed you in any way? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think it, it really, you know, as I, as I said, I grew up, um, I was an army brat. I didn't look like anybody in my class. (laughs) Um, I remember I, I, remember going to yet another new school and I was walking to my desk and this kid stopped me on my way down the aisle and he said, what are you? Are you this? Are you that? Are you this? Are you that? And I, I would just said, nope, 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 nope. And I finally just said, I- I'm half Korean, half white. And I just sat down. But, you know, it's that thing where, and it, it really didn't bother me in the moment, but, you know, you have those experiences stack up over your entire childhood and your entire life, really, of, you know, people commenting on how you look all the time. Um, you're like, okay, wait, where do I belong? Where, where are my people? What? So I think in being an actor, I actually have found quite a community of other half Asian, half or half Korean actresses. It's pretty amazing. Wow. Um, so I have found community, but also just um, with that work, it's all about connecting to our shared humanity. And that is where I feel fine belonging. I'm like, okay, we all have varying experiences, but a very similar human experience. And so always being on a a path to, you know, looking inward and, you know, exploring, you know, how would I 
how would a person or how would I react in this situation in this person's shoes and having that empathetic eye, you know, has helped me to find a sense of belonging and, um, and even, but, and also celebrating, you know, differences, you know, and being able to have, uh, you know, just feeling like everyone, everyone belongs, <laughs> you know, and it sort of feels kumbaya, but it really, I, I genuinely believe it. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, that kind of work. Um, and then being able to step behind the camera as a photographer and encouraging out and capturing the beauty, you know, the unique qualities of each person um, is healing to me because I'm able to give that energy to that person that's in front of my camera and hopefully not only, you know, take a pretty picture, but also give them a, a space, an experience, you know, within our hour or two or whatever of, of going, wow, I really feel like I belonged here, like I could stand in my true self, like I could really be seen. And, you know, it's, um, it's all around um, a healing thing to be able to stand in that kind of a space and create that space. Wow, that's amazing. I'm sure as a child, too, there's like a lot of insecure feelings when someone's asking you those questions. And you're like, I don't know what to say, you know, or you might not. And then to be able to empathize and to bring out like because like we were talking about earlier there's a lot of insecurities that come out during a photo session where a person's like do I look good enough you know or um I don't know I'm afraid about how these are gonna are they gonna turn out right you know and um yeah you just go through all these things in your head and you are there to guide that person and make them feel at ease and create that safe space. So, yeah. And, and, and be able to be the voice that counterpoints those limiting beliefs for them, yeah. which is a great practice for me too, to say, Oh, okay. I might have a limiting belief about something in this moment, but there's always something that can knock that over and just to, and, or eliminate it, you know, exactly. Like when, when some, someone's worried about, oh, how do I look in this? I'm like, they're digitals. We can delete all the bad ones, you know, or, you know, just to find the levity in it too. Yeah. Um, or we will just try something different or we'll, you know, it, so finding the playfulness, especially when both you're in front of and behind the camera, I find it really takes the pressure off, you know, and, and that's when you can actually relax into it and be, you know, your authentic self. You know, Absolutely. it's so important to have that playful, playful sense to, yeah, release all those, those thoughts that can Absolutely. creep up. Yeah. I feel like our last session was a lot more playful mm -hmm. and creative and fun mm -hmm. than the other ones. And I think because you also like have been watching me. So you've been uh, yeah. seeing my involvement and like, yes. you just stepped into this creative space with me. That was so like who I am at my core and it, it helped a lot, it helped a lot to like um, make things more just entertaining and fun and not so serious. I and, then, and then I think the photos themselves, you know, then reflected that, you know, yes. that's what I love. You know, it's like, there she is. She is so beautiful, so strong and creative. And um, yeah, it, it I, I love hearing that. That's, that's like the best compliment if that was your experience, because that's definitely my goal. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so do you have any interesting stories from being an actress? Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. I've, you know, gotten to do a lot of traveling for work. Um, I, the, the coolest, most, um, I don't know. The coolest job I think I did was I was the international face of Pond's skin cream at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I cool. was um, flown over to China and I did this sort of mini epic film I shot in this palace where they shot the movie Hero with Jet Li. Mm -hmm. I had to ride horses. So I actually trained for a week with this stunt horseback rider and we did some crazy, you know, stunt riding before I ended up going to China. So <laughs> that was a really, really cool experience. Um, was that the photo of you on a white horse? I remember seeing that on your Instagram. That was, um, no, that was like a modeling thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a beautiful it, photo. It was. I was just there to model uh, wedding dresses. And this guy came up with two horses and we just said, can we 
use those at our photo shoot. <laughs> and I said, can I get on the horse? So that, that was how that happened. <laughs> very impromptu, very unexpected, super awesome. <laughs> I love that. Wow. So, um, what words of wisdom do you have for all the creative spirits out there? Oh, I would, you know, go back to just, um, just going back to thinking about what is your essential purpose for being creative? What do you want to explore for yourself and ask yourself, you know, what can I learn here? Because I think having a beginner's mindset has consistently brought me out of my mind and out of my limiting beliefs about if I'm getting it right. I was a gymnast. So I, you know, always think about sticking the landing and getting things perfect and having perfectionist mindset has never helped me. It's always having a beginner's mindset that brings me back to being in a creative flow and taking the pressure off. And that's where the magic happens for me. So um, kind of having, again, that inner, that conversation with yourself to bring yourself back to that inner wisdom and to your inner creativity and your inner purpose for why it is that you do this every day. Um, Cause it's not, always magical and it doesn't always feel you know super inspired but to create a practice where you work on something regularly um because you never know what you're going to find you know and that reminds me again back to that 40 days i spent learning how to shoot on manual <laughs> that was just a that was complete beginner's mindset opening my eyes seeing things differently exploring getting inspired i would sit under this bottle brush tree for hours <laughs> and shoot pictures of hummingbirds. And I just, that was before I had kids and I had time to do that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So we can't always do that, but, um, but I think it's just that, just going back to that um, sense of exploration and, and, and wonder, you know, I think we all need that. We do. Know? And I've done like hundred days of uh, painting, like I've done those yes. day challenges and it's always been, and I've done a podcast on it before. It's always been so eye opening to go through those. And I've done several of them. And each time I learn something different about myself and it heals me in a different way. And just, you get over the whole, um, perfectionism thing, you know, you're like, okay, move on. It didn't, Absolutely. this one didn't turn out so great and that's okay. Time to move on right. to the next one. And it's beautiful to see the evolution of it. And I even watch my daughter who, you know, and she, when she was younger, she used to get so frustrated with something she would create. And I would let her go through that frustration. And then I would see what would happen after she got through it instead of trying to save her. You know, and I, and I think we need to do that for ourselves too, is just um, be more compassionate to ourselves and our creative process and just let all those emotions go through and put it on whatever it is you are doing. Yes, um, and, and to not let those feelings stop you from continuing. Yeah. Yes, and I think that's the great thing about having a, a, a regular practice because, you know, I'll, you know, in a session, I'll, I'll photograph, you know, hundreds of images. And of course they're not all perfect and great. And sometimes my camera settings are off and, and you only can learn from those things. Yeah. So to have a regular practice so that you are continuing to explore and continuing to make mistakes and just continuing to inch forward to, you know, progressing so that what you see in your mind and in your heart can actually, you know, <laughs> either be done in a photo or in your paintings or whatever it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. So where can people find you and your work? So for my acting, it's katherinekresge.com and photography, katherinekangphotography.com. <laughs> so I have those things separated. Yeah. Um, very convenient to have two last names and two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's where you can find me. Awesome. Or on Instagram at Catherine Kang Photo. Yes. Thank you for being here with me today, Catherine. It was such a pleasure. And I love, this is why I love doing this, because I get to know 
that person who I work with and I've known for years so much better because we don't get to have these conversations, you know, while we're working. And so it's, it's nice to have that and to get to know you better and the story behind um, everything. Yeah. Yes. You're doing. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl. And I love what you're doing, highlighting other creative people, other women entrepreneurs. I think it's um, definitely aligned with what I love to do. And so thank you for putting it out into the world and, and highlighting other, other people and having these conversations. Thank you.